Hey everyone, this is Mike with Buzz Talks, and today we are recapping and reviewing Chapter 7 of The Mandalorian and diving into some character development for little baby Yoda. It's great that they're finally getting back on track with the main plot in this episode. The last three episodes have just been what seem like side missions, and we're now finally getting all the characters from the previous episodes coming together into our main storyline. Mando gets a hollow transmission from Grief, which drives the main plot back into this episode. Grief wants to make a deal with the Mandalorian. After Mando left Navarro, the client's forces increased, and they now control Grief City, bringing problems for the guild. Grief wants Mando to put aside their differences and come back and take out the client. Grief says if Mando comes back, he'll clear his name with the guild, because as a man of honor, he shouldn't be forced to live in exile. And Mando's sense of honor seems to be a flaw in his general character. As an orphan, he wants a sense of belonging. And to do that, uh, he needs to satisfy both the code of the bounty hunters and the code of the Mandalorians. But just like Quinn in the last episode, the Mando is manipulated by others who question and appeal to his honor. But the Mandalorian really doesn't have any other choices right now. He knows he'll always be on the run unless he takes out the client, but he isn't a fool, he's not going to go back alone, so he gathers his team together. There's a fun fight club scene with Kara and a Zabrek. This is the same species as Darth Maul, and the crowd in the scene are all humanoid except for an orange Sullust and what I think is a blue Voss. Now Kara isn't up for joining Mando. She has to lay low because she has a death sentence on her by the New Republic. Apparently, she's done some horrible things in her past. And I think that her redemption, just like with Mando, will be a main theme throughout the show. Her continued hate of the Empire, though, makes her reconsider. And when Mando informs her that the target is an Imperial, she joins him. They go grab Quill, and we learn some more backstory for the character which endears us to him. He was essentially a slave to the Empire and earned his freedom through three human lifetimes of labor. Quill joins so that the child doesn't have to live the kind of life he did under the Empire, and he brings his three blurgs and a reconstructed and reprogrammed IG-11 with him. Mando and Kara have an arm wrestle, and in this hilarious scene we see the baby channel Darth Vader and force choke Kara. She and Quill get into an argument, and Quill makes the child a new pram. They meet up with Grief and the two and two bounty hunters that are with them, and they make a plan to take out the client. And that evening, they're camped out and attacked by this in this awesome scene by creatures who are a mix of dragons and Minox, which we saw in Empire Strikes Back. The surprise of the first part of the attack was amazing, uh, kind of having a horror aspect to it, just like we had a horror aspect in the last episode when he took out Bill Burr. Um, and But that was really some terrible shooting in this scene by everyone involved and kind of made me question what's going on here. Grief is badly hurt during the attack, but he's healed by the baby just like we saw him trying to do with Mando in Chapter 2. And surprisingly, Carl Weathers, one of my favorite actors uh, in the show, was so far has been was pretty stiff in this episode. He speaks very formally and throughout the whole thing, and it seems like a contrast to the character that we were introduced to in Chapter 1. And I don't feel as if he did enough to earn any of the Mando's trust in that first scene when he first shows up, and I was really surprised that Mando led him anywhere near the child, let alone allowing him to pick it up. I did, however, like Weathers in the second half of the episode, when he tries for a bit of redemption uh, in that double-cross scene uh, where he takes out his two own own bounty hunters because he was moved by Baby Yoda saving him. He sees how important the child is. Uh, they then argue about a new plan and Quill is sent back to the ship with the baby. Grief and Karga and uh, Kara, sorry, Grief, Kara and Mando come into the town and Mando is in resta restraints in this scene and this uh, is kind of referencing Chewbacca that was put in cuffs in A New Hope uh, led around by Han. They sit down with the client, and I was very sorry to see this is probably the last episode that Werner Herzog is going to be in. Uh, every line he says is amazing, questioning the rise of the rebellion and reinforcing his view that the Empire brought order to chaos. Uh, he's sum summarily dismissed by this new bad Gideon Moth uh, that we see played by Giancarlo Esposito, uh, who finally makes his first appearance here. 
It's an amazing intro of Moff Gideon as we see his converted TIE fighter land and the Death Troopers and Storm Troopers assembling together. And I was feeling emotionally the same way I did the first time I saw Darth Vader and then in Empire Strikes Back when we first see the Emperor. Um, it's definitely channeling the same idea of this evil man in black. Uh, we see his uh, ruthlessness in the death of the client. Failure is definitely not an option when working for the Moff, just like with Darth Vader. And uh, Gideon also seems to be one step ahead of everyone else. He knew that the client was going to be betrayed. And he knows the child will soon be in his possession. And this mastermind aspect to him, his self-assuredness, makes him a more compelling character and a great adversary to Mando. We then have a race to get Quill and Baby back to his ship before they're caught uh, by the speeder troopers. And then our final scene at the end uh, with a likely dead Quill and the baby taken away by the speeders. This episode finally brought a few things to think about when it comes to Baby Yoda, who really has we haven't learned a ton about. Uh, like many fans, the Mandalorian suggests in this episode that it might be a strand cast, a, a clone. But Quill disagrees. Uh, he's worked in gene farms in his past, and he says the baby is uh, looks evolved, and he's too ugly to be a clone. However, this doesn't mean that he isn't a clone of Yoda, because Yoda was, after all, pretty ugly. The child has imprinted on Mando and is very protective of him. We have that amazing scene I mentioned where he force chokes Kara uh, when he thinks Kara is hurting Mando. And this actually tells us a lot about the character. First, it tells us, it lets us know that even though he's 50 years old, the creature is still a baby mentally. Uh, it's, it's not an act to make us believe it's defenseless like some have suggested. It really has no comprehensive sense about what's going on around it. Like a baby, it's going to be largely reactive and absorb information from what it experiences. And these experiences will have a profound influence on what kind of person it becomes. Remember that it's both nature and nurture which makes us who we are. And even if he is a Yoda clone or a child of Yoda, it doesn't mean he's going to be inherently good. And I was thinking about this at the intro of the show when they recapped scenes from previous episodes. Uh, I noticed that a couple of the recap scenes were of the baby watching horrible things. Mando shooting IG-11 in the head, Mando killing stormtroopers both with a blaster and with his flamethrower. That final shot in the intro where it shows the baby looking at the flames. Um, with this influence, he might not grow up with the reverence to life that Yoda had, and just like any Force user, he's going to be tempted by the dark side. However, we can imagine that the baby has already learned some compassion from his time with Dr. Pershing, who may or may not have been a good man, but he tried his best to care for the child. Pershing's influence may be why we saw the child, child heal grief in this episode, uh, or it may just be a natural instinct to members of Yoda's species. I was surprised at how much time was spent with the reintroduction of IG-11. Uh, it was a cute scene, uh, but it seemed a bit long for how short these Mandalorian episodes are. But I believe they were trying in this scene to really bring home the idea that IG-11 is a new person now because of the parenting that Quill did with him. Quill reflects on droids here, stating they are neutral reflections of those who imprint on them. And in these scenes, they're reminding us that just like IG-11, the child needs to be shown patience and affirmation in order to develop into the light side of the Force. They're hinting at a betrayal uh, by IG-11 uh, with Mando's continued distrust, and perhaps uh, the idea that maybe it was IG-11 who shot Quill at the end. But I believe that IG-11 is going to be another representation of the redemption theme of the show. Just like with Mando, we're going to see that people can change and we aren't defined by our past. So what do you think of Chapter 7, The Reckoning? And what do you think is going to happen next? I'd love to hear some theories. I personally think that IG-11 will come to the rescue in this next episode. And we're, we're going to see how Quill how Quill imprinted his character on the droid. Thanks a lot, and please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below to us here at Buzz Talks. Take care.